Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and I want to share the tragic story of my colony in RimWorld and its demise in this new challenge series I'm calling Randy's Hardcore Hard Mode. So, to kick off the series, I first need to explain how it works, of course. Basically, I play the classic RimWorld scenario, Crash Landed, with Randy Random as the storyteller AI. We need to set his difficulty to hard and make sure that permadeath is checked on. Then, we go ahead and keep the default seed that we receive and generate our new world. This seems about as good as any spot to land on. Let's move on. Now the biggest part of this challenge is keeping the hand that we're dealt at the beginning of the game for our colonists regardless of how good or bad they are. We can only change their names while everything else is set, so let's get this started. Okay, so of course the first colonist is going to be me. Hot dog. Unfortunately I'm incapable of violence and I'm an abrasive misogynist. Nice. Lewis commented on my tutorial video asking me to make a series on the game, so good news Lewis, you're coming with me on this journey. Lewis has pretty good stats and really high melee. That should be helpful since I'm incapable of violence. Mystical Pie also mentioned doing a series on the game, so of course you're coming to the rim with me too. Mystical Pie's stats aren't the best, but this will have to do regardless, I suppose. Oh, here's a bonus. Apparently Mystical Pie is my father. Interesting. Alright, so here's the hand that we've been dealt. I wish my shooting construction and plants were a little bit higher, but I think I can work with this. And really, that's it. From here, the challenge is to survive as long as we can and document the events of our colony. This is where our story begins. Day 1. As soon as the three of us land, of course we need to scan the area to find the most ideal spot to build our base. This area looks pretty good, and we already have a structure that we can use for shelter. We'll add some beds and build out our foundation. This seems like a good place for our crops, and we'll add a wind turbine for power here too. We need to grow our necessary crops, heel root being one of the most important ones. Oh. Oh. Never mind, I guess. Alright then, I guess we're just gonna have to plant basic food and then some cotton. That's good enough for now, so let's get started and equip our men with the appropriate gear. Lewis is our tough melee fighter, so he'll wear the armor, of course. We'll put our stockpile zone just south of our shelter. Things look to be off to an okay start. We'll want to get a stone cutting table though, so we can build walls that aren't flammable. Oh, we forgot about Mystical Pie's Yorkshire Terrier that crash landed with us. Let's make sure to train him when we have the time too. Our shelter is almost finished before dusk, which is really good. We also finished our wind turbine, so we can start getting electricity soon. Overall, the first day was very productive. Sleep well, my colonists. There's much work yet to be done. Lewis starts day two off by cutting some stone blocks that'll be used to expand our shelter into an actual base. We'll want to roof off our stockpile zone, so we'll build some pillars around the edge of it. We're almost done roofing it off after we cut down a few more trees blocking the way. Why isn't the turbine generating power? Oh, okay, so we'll need to clear out the trees in that area soon. At the end of the evening, the group works together trying to plant more crops for food. Another successful day. Time to rest up again. It's time to start expanding our base out. We'll expand out one room at a time. I think this will be a nice size for their individual bedrooms. And out of nowhere, Mystical Pie's pet terrier Warlock was killed instantly. Uh oh. It looks like it was torn to death by a wandering warg. Three days in and we already suffered a loss. Immediately following those unfortunate events, Mystical Pie is close to having a breakdown. That evening, the loss of his pet caused him to have a tantrum. He went to the crash site stockpile and was taking his anger out in the supplies there. Oh crap, he almost completely destroyed our only supply of medicine. We need to get that into our stockpile zone before it completely deteriorates from the weather. So I quickly learned that one of the updates in RimWorld requires your stockpile zones to be completely walled off to actually prevent the deterioration. That's not good. We need to get that taken care of immediately. Alright, at this point, we get the designated name for ourselves. We'll be known as the Pixel Rookies, and we'll name our colony New Raleigh. Yesterday was rough since we lost poor Warlock, and because of Mystical Pie's tantrum, we're trying to salvage our medicine before it's completely lost. Um, they all decide to go work on the crops instead though. We need to fix that. Oh, that's not good. We need more stone blocks before we can finish walling it off. Let's take care of that now. Ah, some good luck comes our way as a wanderer joins the group. 
We'll rename her to one of my Discord members, Obvious Lee. Welcome to New Raleigh. We're glad to have you here. We'll make sure Lee equips the handgun just in case. Uh, so I forgot to build a bed for Obvious Lee. Let's do that while they nap outside tonight. Unfortunately, we weren't able to salvage our medicine in time and it all expired. We'll just have to make do without it, I guess. Now that the wind turbine is working correctly, let's run power to the battery storage area. We'll carve out a hole in the mountain here. Day 5 was slow and we lost our medicine, but we're still progressing regardless. We're expanding our base even more now. Okay, so I quickly learned that another change in the most recent update is that batteries aren't unlocked by default. Let's research those so we can store our electricity. Poor Mystical Pi had another mental break and starts going around insulting everyone. He recovered soon enough though, and then we were hit with some more good luck. An escape pod landed with Kyle, who's injured and needs to be captured so we can fix him up and recruit him to our colony. He'll make a fine addition to New Raleigh once he's ready to join. Lee sets him up in his room before calling it a day with everyone else. Before the day closes, we get hit with a heat wave. That might cause some problems. We'll try to combat this with a cooler that vents to the neighboring rooms. The eighth day begins with more work on the base's expansion, and it's finally time to avenge Warlock and take out the warg that killed him. Lewis will finish the job. At dusk, a wild buck went mad and started to storm the colony. We need to take care of that. The buck managed to get right into our gunmen's faces and attack. Lewis went over to join the fight, but they took it down before he got there. Poor Hot Dog, who is supposed to be non-violent, went into a sadistic rage due to the intense heat wave that's been going on. This is a direct threat to our colonists, so Lewis needs to keep the peace and arrest Hot Dog. Before making his way over to Hot Dog though, he managed to break into Kyle's cell and assault him. Before we make the arrest, we want to make sure that we put our knife down so things don't get too violent. Fortunately, Hot Dog did not resist the arrest and the situation was handled. We'll have to recruit him back once he simmers down some more. During all of this, I didn't realize how low we were in food supplies. We've completely run out of food and our crops weren't ready to be harvested yet. That's going to be a problem. Obviously, was injured by the wild buck and since the pixel rookies ran out of food, they had to feed off the raw corpse of the dead animals for now. Then out of nowhere, a rabid monkey attacks the base. Fortunately, it was taken out without any problems though. Because of our shortage of food, Hot Dog has another mental break from his malnourishment and starts going berserk. This is where things start to go sour. He managed to break out of his holding cell and makes his way into Mystical Pie's room to cause harm. Unfortunately, Hot Dog gets into a scuffle with Lewis and Mystical Pie. The stress of the fight and not having food to eat made Lewis go into a berserker's rage. This is really bad because he's by far our colony's strongest melee fighter and he's carrying around his knife. This is bad. Lewis quickly incapacitates Hot Dog and Mystical Pie. While still going berserk, he makes his way to Obvious Lee who's still recovering from the Wild Buck's attack. Lee obviously senses danger and flees from Lewis while he's still in his berserker state and tries to rescue Mystical Pie and Hot Dog, but she needs to rest because of her prior injuries first. Lewis finds Obvious Lee and blocks the only exit from a room before Lee can make an escape. He stabs her and incapacitates her. Things are really looking bad now. Fortunately, Lewis comes back to his senses and Obvious Lee is able to recover enough to get back into bed and start recovering again. Poor Lee goes into a catatonic state because of how ravenously hungry she's become. Lewis is my only functioning colonist at this point and he's back to his senses. He knows he needs to give aid to Mystical Pi. Unfortunately, he was too late though. Mystical Pies lost too much blood from the injuries he sustained and died while being helped. Lewis knew that he had to help Obvious Lee before she suffered the same fate and get Hot Dog some aid too. The last person to rescue was Kyle, but Lewis was too injured and collapsed on his way to him. Everyone was wounded and incapacitated now. This is really bad. On the morning of the 10th day, Hot Dog got an infection in his heart from his wounds. His time was coming up soon. Later that day, a storm came by and Hot Dog died from his infected wounds alone in his bed while everyone else was slowly fading away too. Obviously, Lee was needing immediate medical assistance too, but no one was able to help. 
After the storm passed, obviously succumbed to her wounds too. The only remaining colonist left was Lewis, who was too injured to get up from the ground. This was it. Perhaps things weren't over yet though. A refugee was being chased to New Raleigh, and if we offered her safety, maybe she could help Lewis and fend off the attacker. There was still hope. We'll quickly change our savior's name to Smonk from my Discord channel and have her immediately attempt to rescue Lewis. Raider was right behind Smonk's heels though and was attacking immediately. Smonk rescued Lewis first, but made the mistake of not grabbing a weapon in time. The Raider was already at the base. Smonk was clever and hid inside while the Raider decided to attack the wiring of the power. This gave her a chance to sneak by and grab the spare rifle. A firefight broke out. Smonk's first shot was a direct hit. Things might actually work out. And it turns out that Smonk wasn't actually the best shot and misses the next few shots while taking two shotgun blasts head on. The Raider was distracted again, so Smonk made a final attempt to take him out. She couldn't make the shots count and got taken out by one final blast. The Raider decided to vandalize some of the base and catch poor Kyle's bed on fire while he was still in it. Fortunately, the fire died down before causing too much harm to him though. In the midst of the chaos, Lewis died of malnutrition. After incapacitating New Raleigh's only hope, he decided to capture poor Smonk and take him back to his base. There was so much hope and was taken away in an instant as Smonk was being carried away while suffering a medical emergency from the gunshot wounds. Before the raider could even leave the area with Smonk, she died from her wounds and just like that, New Raleigh was laid to waste and wiped out. The only person remaining was Kyle who laid in the dirt, dying next to the rotting corpse of the warg and quickly passed away as well. The brave colonists of New Raleigh only lasted 11 days before being completely wiped out and their only remains is the shell of their base. And that's the story of the massacre of New Raleigh. I hope you guys enjoyed this story. I plan on doing another Randy's Hardcore Hard Mode run and hopefully this will last more than one episode. If you want to be part of the future series, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to add you in. As always though, thanks for watching and until next time, have a good one.